What's going on, people? Welcome back to another opposition preview. The international break is over. Enough of that. Enough of England. Enough of whatever country you've been watching. It's time to get back to business. And I've got Joe here from the Turfcast podcast to look ahead to our game against Burnley on the weekend. As always, if you do enjoy it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Joe, you've been a regular on this um, on this show for pretty much every game that we played, and. We've had a change of manager, but you still got Sean Dash there. He was actually linked with a move away from the club over in the summer to us, but yeah. it didn't happen. Um, but you're currently in the relegation zone. You finished one place above it last season. Is it, what's the feeling like um, around the Burnley fans? Is it the same old, same old? Are you just saying, oh, or have you just been unlucky with the results and it's still early in the season? Yeah, I think I think there's a mixture of both amongst the fans. I think there are some fans that are getting a little bit sort of like, Fed up. No, we're not fed up. That's, that's the wrong word. But sort of like there's a few mumblings of oh, another season of just surviving. But I think if you look at the bigger picture, we've been quite unlucky this season. Obviously, we were just having a bit of a chat off camera. But um, on the opening day of the season against Brighton, which sets the tone for the rest of the year, by the way, that opening game of the season, it's probably one of the most important games in a season. If you get a win, because the Premier League season is so short, if you get a win in that opening game and you get a run of form going and a run of results going because of that win in the opening game, just like Brighton have, who found themselves what, like fourth at one point. Um, yeah. So then, because yes, <laughs> again, sorry, for mentioning, Brighton. Yeah, sorry, for it. <laughs> Brighton but, uh, already. <laughs> <laughs> but then that, that opening day of the season, we went on the up against them and we looked so good in that first half. We went one nil up. We hit the post. We hit the crossbar. It could have easily been three four nil and it would have been game over. The team that I'm not allowed to mention, I've just mentioned too much, should be in the relegation <laughs> zones rather than in yeah. the Champions League zones. And we could be up there as well, but it just sets the tone. Like I said to you at half-time, um, Potter mixed it up and brought Lallana on, packed the midfield, and then we lost the midfield battle because our two midfield boys are a, a little bit lightweight in West Ham. I think it was Cork on that opening day of the season. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we do tend to, to struggle in the midfield. But the over, at my opinion is so far, we've been very, very unlucky. Like I say, there's the Brighton game uh, where we're unlucky. Uh, Arsenal game. There's a few others um, as well off the top of my head that I can't remember. Leeds at home should have beat them quite comfortably. They they were poor and they've been poor so far this season. Right, yeah. they're above us at the minute, um, but I, I think they're going to struggle. Um, and then finally, you know, we really turned it on against Brentford, and I mean this in the nicest possible way. Um, it is only Brentford. However, you know, they've started very very well, or they did start very very yeah. well. A couple of games before us, it looks like they've fallen off an absolute cliff. Um, but obviously. That's Brentford. Um, but yeah, and but against Chelsea, against Chelsea, we've got um, a very, very good point. Um, you know, uh, it's all it's never to be sniffed at a point at Stamford Bridge, no matter how you get it. Yeah, Chelsea should have won that comfortably, to be fair. Um, but Nick Pope is part of our team and everyone's saying, oh, you only, only got the point because of Nick Pope. Well, he's the goalkeeper. That's why he's there. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if, if, if he was rubbish, you know, he wouldn't be there. We'd have got rid of him like we got rid of the keepers <laughs> in the past, like Joe Hart and stuff. So... Um, yeah, I think we've been unlucky. We could easily find ourselves comfortably in mid-table, but we're not. And now this, like I said, it sets the tone for the rest of the season. Because the season when we finished in, in, in the Europa League, like you mentioned, we won the opening game of the season and then went on a brilliant run of form. And then you've got ahead of steam and it just builds and builds and builds. And Whereas it's the opposite now. You're just constantly trying to get that next step and that next win and then you make stupid decisions because of pressure. So hopefully we can get out of it. A couple of wins um, and then I, I don't think we'll look back really. Yeah, talking about Sean Dash, I quickly mentioned him about his move potentially away from the club um, in the summer. Palace were linked with him even before the summer as well. He didn't come to yeah. us. But what's the position like um, with the Burnley fans towards Sean Dash? Would they be too upset if he left? Because we're talking about unluckiness, but I think Palace have been unlucky. But, you know, we're sitting, for example, 10th in the league. It can change massively. But yeah, right now you've been unlucky and you're in a relegation zone. Are there some fans who... We don't really see managers like Sean Dash staying at one club for a very long time. It barely happens nowadays um, in modern football. And now he's been with you guys for, feels like, years and years and years. I think eight years. It I is. Know, I think it's nine year. years now. Nine yeah, years Nine now. years. So what, what's the feeling like? Would would Bernie fans mind if you moved on from him at a certain stage? Or are you happy with him staying at the club for another 10 years? Personally, I'm happy with him staying. I'd be gutted if he left. I think the reason why we are still in this league is because of Sean Dyche. When you look at the previous ownership, like no money was spent for like the last three seasons. And somehow Sean managed to keep us in the Premier League time and time again. All right, Sean's made a few bad signings in the past. Ben Gibson um, is one of them, a few others as well. Jelly Vossen, um, I'm sure you've probably never even heard of him. That exactly speaks volumes. Um, <laughs> but like, 
if, if we had brought, like, I don't know, an up-and-coming young manager in from the Championship, because that's probably the best that we can hope for um, mm. if, if Dash left, then, yeah, I think we'd have gone down in the last three, four seasons. So, for me personally, I'd be gutted if he left. There's one or two comments coming in on the podcast pages, sort of like saying, oh, I won't be too fussed if he left now. But I just think that's... People get a bit bored of the same sort of style of the same sort of comments. I think yeah. it's just comments in press conferences where I tend to find that people say this sort of thing. It's always the same thing in press, uh, in press conferences and post-match comments and stuff. It's always the same sort of sentences. So I think people get a bit fed up with that. But again, you've just got to look at the bigger picture. And people always, when I always put the argument up of, well, who would you get in if Dice left? People always try and rebuff it by saying, well, that's not the point. Well, that's exactly the point. Like if, if we brought a manager who wasn't good enough, which I think we probably would do, especially so early in the new owner's tenureship, um, if that's even a word, um, then I think you know they might struggle. <laughs> they might struggle to sort of like get that decision correct. So yeah, personally, I'd, I'd be gutted if Dice left. He is he epitomizes Burley football club. When you look at his personality and his style of play when he was a player, that's pretty much how we play now. So for someone to be here for for so long and to have themselves ingrained into a club so deeply and to do so well at the club, because let's be honest, yeah, we might be in the relegation mm-hmm. zone at the minute, but when it took over, we were hovering above the championship relegation zone. We've stayed in the Premier League now for, what, five seasons, finishing the top half twice, been in the Europa League, you know, played Olympiacos. You know, Burnley, when I was growing up, that was never going to happen, but it's happened, um, mm-hmm. thanks to Sean Dyche. So it would be a huge job um, if if Dice left. But I know people said that about Palace and Roy Hodgson and, and, you know, you've not really looked back so far. But, yeah, I think Dice is a little bit more ingrained into Burnley than, than Hodgson was into Palace. But, yeah, I'd be good if Dice left. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. Vieira or Sean Dice? <laughs> <You'd rather> have... <laughs> right on. now, I, I, as a Burnley fan, I'd rather have Dice simply because... Okay. Simply because of what I've just said. I think, if honestly, I think... I'm not, and I've, to be fair, people said this about Palace... But I think if somebody like Vieira, who before at Palace, he never really done something that meant me say like brilliant manager. So far, he's kind of proven himself. You know, he's done quite mm. well at Palace. So I'm looking at that now, I'm thinking, yeah, he, maybe he might be decent here. Um, but yeah, um, because of that, ask me again in two years, and if you've like knocking on door at Europa <laughs> League and stuff, then I'll change my mind. But right now, yeah, I, I'm going to say Dice because pretty much everything I've just said, I think even pretty much apart from like the world's best, I'm, I'm going to say Dice because because I've got to look at it from a Burnley perspective and someone coming in and having too much of a job to do, um, I think they'll struggle. All right, let's 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 talk about quickly about your perspective on Palace. I'm not too sure if you watched Palace enough so far this season, but we're sitting 10th in the Premier League. You mentioned about us moving on from Roy Hodgson as well. Um, what have you made of Palace as a neutral so far this season? Yeah, I've seen a few games. Um so not obviously want to watch them as much as you and, and all your followers, listeners. Um, but yeah, I've seen a few games. I've been quite impressed with the style of play. I think you've had a few loan signings in there that have helped. But, you know, that's all part of it. You know, uh, you had a lot of players out of contract. And that was the main talking point in the summer. Of Palace getting rid of Hodgson at the right time. A new manager's going to have to come in now and he's going to have to buy all these players and bring a lot of loan players in. And then that could upset the apple cart. Too many people... Uh, having to get used to a style of play and stuff all at the same time. But so far, so good. Like, I've seen you play some good football. I've seen you play some good stuff. You've got some good players. Obviously, Gallagher's just been called up to the England squad. And obviously, me and you have done some shows together before. Is it Fans Bet TV, where we'll find ourselves on every now and then. And you constantly sing Gallagher's praises. Uh, and obviously, I don't watch Palace as much as you. But from what, what I've seen of him, it looks very good. He probably should have scored against San Marino. I was working it, so he might have ended up scoring in the end. But he had that one chance where he should have scored. That was the only bit I actually saw in the game, really. That and obviously the goal, uh, some of the goals. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like a very, very good player. And I think you've got some good players. And 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 so far, I've been quietly impressed with Vieira. I wasn't overly impressed with that appointment because of what I've just said. Like he didn't, mm. he didn't rip up any trees in the MLS. Um, I, I think that's where he was, wasn't it? In the MLS. Yeah, yeah, it was in MLS um, yeah. and over in France as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, he, he didn't rip up any trees in some of them. Um, but then he obviously knows the Premier League quite well. So I think it's he's kind of come here and, and so far it suited him. Um you were quite unlucky against Arsenal as well. Um, from when I saw that game as well, yeah, annoys um, me, annoys yeah. me. Arsenal, um, Brighton, I said it myself, in them games, both of them games, we should have won it. It's not even the last yeah. minute, it's the last kick of the game, it's the last yeah. corner, uh, last yeah. goal kick, and we absolutely bottled it. And if we did win them games, which we should have, um, right now we're two points off Liverpool, which sounds yeah, exactly. absolutely crazy considering where we were about like eight months ago, forget about 12 months. Um, so yeah, so we should have won them games. But when you're talking about players, you mentioned Conor Gallagher, but let's talk about your star boy, Maxwell Cornet. 
But I love him, Spice, honestly. Yeah, that, this <laughs> guy, man. This guy, he's just so... When you think of a Burnley player, Maxwell Corner is the last person you think of. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> yes. uh, I don't just necessarily mean his style of play. I mean, but everything, like his personality is just so, like... Exuberant, like he runs around on pitch and he's laughing and like messing about. Like I've just said to you off air, dinner. He's mm. just recently had a haircut before he went on international duty with the Ivory Coast for like their World Cup qualifiers. And most people, like my friend, my former co-host on Surfcast, he is an hairdresser and he will not every now and then put up pictures of himself cutting Tarky's hair or um, Jack Cork's hair or, or whatever. And it's just a picture <laughs> of him with some clippers and some scissors. Job done. Maxwell yeah. Corner, there's like six people surrounding him, all wearing aprons, and one of them's turned his air spray can into like a flamethrower. And that just sums <laughs> him up perfectly. That just sums him up perfectly, mate. He's he's mad. I love him. But yeah, he's coming and he's injected like an absolute breath of fresh air into this club. And I think without him, there might be a few more moans and groans because like, here we go again, typical Burnley style of play. It can, it can get a bit tedious. So, like, I, I've watched games and gone bloody hell. That, that were pretty boring to watch, as as pretty much every fan of every club has. Yeah. But I think in the last two, three years, and we've been back against the wall battling since the Europa League season, we've um, probably seen it a few more than most. However, Maxwell's come in, he's changed the style of play, and he's took a bit of pressure off Dwight McNeil as well, because Dwight McNeil wasn't the only creative player that we had. Now Maxwell's come in and he's probably more creative. You know, he's scored some goals, been nominated for player of the month as well, and, and, and he's been fantastic. Honestly, he's an absolute breath of fresh air, and... And it's so far, he seems to love it here, man. He's laughing. He's he's finally found the badge. I don't know if you saw the pictures that went viral of him pointing at the Umbro crest uh, when we signed him. <laughs> he's finally found the badge. He's kissing the badge, which I've never normally a massive fan of, to be fair, because I'm normally like, what are you doing that for? You're just going to leave if yeah. someone else comes. But like, this guy's come in. This guy's come in from like south of France, you know, from the Ivory, mm. uh, but look, born and raised in the Ivory Coast. Well, he never heard of Berlin's laugh, and now he's in. Like, we were all chanting his name after the Brighton game. And um, he just he, he stayed on the pitch. Everyone else had gone, and he stayed on the pitch, and he's done a lap of honour. He's like clapping up fans, and we're all going, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> it's just It just sums him up, man. He, and he's honestly, he's a breath of fresh air, and you can see, like, I'm smiling now talking about it, like I'm talking about, like, a, a newfound love, and that's probably exactly what it is, really. Um, what? Yeah, I'm what always good, excited though? to see Maxwell play. Like, I'm always excited to see him on the ball and, like, and run. Like, he'll, he'll have a few, like, not donkey moments, but, you know, he's probably not the best at one-on-ones. He could have really mm. scored against City. He had a couple of one-on-ones against Arsenal, or was it Leeds? I can't remember, but he gets on the ball and he runs forward and he makes things happen. And and now we've got that on both sides with him and Dwight. So, so yeah, it's, it's fun to watch. And thankfully, we're moving a little bit away from that sort of, like, backs against the wall style. Their, their element is still there. I think it always will be there under Dice because... He likes his side to defend. Um, and one of the stats I saw recently, like the most three individual number of blocks by any player in the Premier League this season are all Burnley players. And one of them's Dwight McNeil. And that just goes to show like what Dash asks of Dwight is always going to be told to track back and stuff. So I think that sort of like sums us up. But yeah, it's um attacking, we're looking much better this season. Um it's it's the defense where we normally are quite good that's that's kind of let us down this season. Yeah, so is that your main weakness? So how do Palace Right now, the new Palaces, as as you've seen as well in a couple of games that you have watched, we like to keep the ball. We like to have high pressure, um, dominate the midfield. You mentioned about your midfield. Is that the yeah. main area that Palace should be targeting in this game? Um, yeah, our midfield? Our midfield for me. Our midfield for me. Um, I, I, it tends to be like this big debate on the Burnley socials all the time, like which three should we play? And I think ultimately, all three of them are just, maybe I'm being a bit harsh on Westwood here, but all three of them are, probably below par. Again, mm. I probably am being a little bit harsh on Westwood there because he has actual... Like, they're all three smallish lads. And I think that's why we get overrun in midfield, which which we do quite a lot. Um, they're all three quite small and p- probably get bullied and barged off the ball quite easily. Um, but Westwood, for example, he's the one that's good on the ball and he can pick out a pass. Um, Brownhill's the one that will will do some, you know tackling and things like that. I think he had the most interceptions in the Premier League last season, uh, just behind Jack Grealish. And then Cork will be the one that sort of like covers all the space and things like that. So they all have their benefits, but they're all quite weak and quite small. Um, but again, yeah, I'm going to backtrack a little bit and say I'll probably be an arch on Westwood. I'll, I'll take Westwood out of that. But I think the other two, Brownhill, for example, I love Josh. I think, I, And I'd rather see him in the side than, than Jack Cork. Sometimes he plays all three, by the way. So, you know, I might see that mm. this weekend against Palace. I think he did against Chelsea. I can't remember off the top of my head, it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, but yeah, Jack will, Jack, Jack, Jack's good to have in there to break the play up. So I like, not Jack, sorry, Josh. So I, I like to have Jack in there. Um, 
but yeah, I think. Uh, sorry, Josh, I'm getting mixed up here. Um, but so yeah, for, for me, I don't. It, it, it's because it involves Jay's. Like, who has yeah, anything yeah, with Jay? Yeah. Like, he says, had, he says, "Cold Joe." You think that's hard? We have James McCarthy and James McCarthy. Oh yeah, like, yeah, Jay, that, yeah. Both James is McCarthy and McCarthy. Yeah. So for the neutral, yeah, they're like. James McCarthy, you know, he's a good player. Like, well, yeah. James McCarthy but what I'm trying to say is, I'd have, <laughs> I'd have Jack in there to break the play up, Westy in there to be on the ball, and if we're mm. in struggle, a danger of getting overrun, like we might do against you boys, stick yeah. Jack in there as well to try and kind of like keep it a little bit. Dwight on left, Maxwell on right, Chris Wood up top on his on his Todd. Um, but again, that can sometimes not work. You'd need the wingers to be really, really helping Chris in that situation. But but yeah, I think I think that going back. To the main question, I think, yeah, the weakness uh, for Burnley is definitely central midfield. And it has been for quite a few years, to be honest. So, with Palace side of things, I, I know you're going to probably say Wilfred Zaha, but who are you most worried about in this game? Are there any other players that stand out for you? You mentioned Conor Gallagher. Is yeah, that well, I mentioned, that, you know, you're concerned yeah. about? Yeah, I think Gallagher, like you said, he, he's very, very good. Um, he's a good player. I've not, I don't, I've not watched him that much. I've not watched Palace that much. Obviously, he's still quite young, um, but he's, you know, he's got an England squad for a reason. Um, so he's good. Um, Eze, Eze, however you pronounce it, I always get it yeah, wrong. Eze, yeah, um, he's back on the bench. I don't, I, I'm going to say I don't even know because he's, he's had an injury recently, hasn't he? Mm. So I'm not sure. But of course, Zaha, I think he's, he's been the main threat at Palace ever since we were playing you regularly in the Championship. You know what I mean? So And he always has fun against us uh, because our fullbacks aren't the fastest in the world. Yeah. I always remember, I think I said it on, on this podcast last season, there's a picture of sort of like Zaha when he scored at the turf a couple of seasons ago, wheeling away in celebration, and just Phil Barsley looking absolutely knackered because he's <laughs> running ragged for like 20 minutes. Probably um, happy that he scored, gets a little yeah. break there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's like Phil's just like, he looks knackered, and that's what Zaha does. He doesn't stop, and you know, he's a quality player. I think you've been lucky to hold on to him for as long mm. as you have, obviously, apart from the, the brief spell he had at Man United. He's always been Palace. Um, I think I think if Burnley had a player of that quality, it, it'd have been gone and, and he didn't want to look back like Maxwell, for example. I think we'll be lucky if we see two and a half seasons out of him. I think after a couple of seasons, they'll probably go on to bigger and better things. But yeah, I think you can count yourselves lucky that you've had a player like that. But yeah, you've got sort of like three decent attacking players there um, that, that we can be worried about, really. So um, hopefully the, the defenders are on song. Uh, and maybe I think because of that, Dash might pack the midfield out and, and hope that we can sort of like nullify you in that way like we did against Chelsea. What about the score prediction? Um, you got a point away from home against Chelsea. This is got it. Got that 3-1 victory over Brentford. How are you feeling in terms of the scoreline? Do you think you can go grab the win at home against Palace? Yeah, I think when, when you play anyone outside the big six at home, which is where we've struggled recently, you've got to mm. back yourself. But as I'd have said, if you'd asked me this six weeks ago, I'd have said Palace. Um, okay. But because we've had the run, I, I'm hoping we've turned the corner the international break could have come at an absolute wrong time for us as soon as we get a bit of a run of results going. That's it. Bang, stop. Yeah, so I'm hoping that that's not the case. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Burnley 1-0, 2-1. I think it'll be a tight game. I think we'll we'll try and nullify your threat. We'll let you have the ball because that's what you want to do. So we'll say, that's fine. You can have it, just like we did against Chelsea. And I've used that example a few times because that's a similar way to what Chelsea play. And they put pressure on us. Thankfully, due to Nick, we didn't, we didn't really crack too much. But I think I think that's the vibe we'll go for. Let you have the ball and say, right, it's up to you to break us down, and then and then hit you um, if uh, in the turnover of possession, try and get it out to Maxwell or Dwight quickly, bomb it forward. Which is exactly what we did to Brentford. It sounds silly saying like, let the opposition team have the ball at home, but when you're playing to your strength, why won't you do that? And this is exactly what we did to Brentford, and we absolutely blew them away. And now obviously Palace are a better side than Brentford. Um, but I'm hoping that we can we can do something similar. So yeah, I'm going to say one nil, maybe two one. Um, I'm good, and hopefully we can start pushing away uh, from this from this relegation zone a little bit. I'm going to go for I don't oh, look with set piece. I think you're getting a set piece goal. I really do think that. I'm not too sure. See, people say we've piece not piece. scored that many this <laughs> season, you know. <laughs> no, but we have, we haven't been good defending set pieces. That's why I'm saying that. And when you look at the aerial threats that you've got, maybe this might be the time that you do score from set pieces at least one goal. So I can just see you guys scoring from it. We haven't been that good defense set pieces, even though we've slightly improved from where we were at the start of the season. So I can see you yeah. getting a goal from there. And Wolves approached the game in a similar way to you guys in terms of they made sure they had the back five and they had all the players that had defending. Um, and we were struggling to break them down in the first half. But in the second half, we changed a couple of things and we did manage to break them down. I don't know how much international break is going to impact us. Um, as as you said, you've been on a run of form and we've been on a run of form, beating City away from home and then beating Wolves um, at home as well. I'm going to go 
Two on Palace. It, I, I feel like we've still got a quality there. I think it's going to be a very tight game. It all depends on minor things such as, you know, can we handle your strikers? Because you've got some physical strikers in there. And Yoki Madison has at times struggled with the physicality. Not Mark Way. He's been solid with us. So I think it's going to be a tight game. It's not going to be like a 2-1 where we dominate and you get a goal. I think it's going to be a tight game in terms of um, the scoreline. You might sit back, but you, I think you'll still create a chance on a counter-attack. But yeah. I'm going to back my boys. I'm travelling up there as well to Burnley. So a 2-1 Palace win. You think that you guys can get a result as well. I think it's going to be a tight contest. And it depends on who turns up on a day and whether the international break has caused any team troubles. Uh, but yeah. as always, um, let us know in the comments down below um, what you think the score predictions are. What's your thoughts on the game? And before we go, Joe, how can they find you um, on Turf Cards Podcast? Yeah, well, it's it's on my name thing there, as you can see. Uh, it's just yeah. at Turfcast Podcast uh, on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, even on TikTok. Although TikTok tends to be one of these things where I post a lot for a week and then I, I don't touch it for six months. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's so, what I'm doing yeah, as well. But, <laughs> yeah, I just forget about it. I forget about yeah. it. Um, but yeah, it's, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. I've had a bit of a break actually recently. This is the first one I've done for about a month. Uh, and then obviously straight off this, we're going to go into a sort of like similar sort of thing. Uh, on my show so if you want to check that out please feel free and of course it's a podcast as well as it is in the name so you can download it on all the good podcast apps and some rubbish ones as well <laughs> all right that's joe there as always thank you to thank you to everyone who's watched this and until next time up the palace